YouTube. Um, got me a little electronic salon ATX power supply breakout board. So you can, if you have an old ATX power supply from an old computer, uh, 20 or 24 pin, you can just plug directly into this and then you have uh, terminal blocks that you can plug stuff into. Um, you get uh, plus three, plus five, one plus twelve if you have a twenty pin, and uh, two plus twelve. Basically, mine's mine's older, so I'm losing uh, one t uh, plus twelve, one plus five, and one plus three, and one common, uh, which ain't a big deal. Um, you know, this is pretty straightforward, simple. All you have to do is just plug in directly as such. Well, maybe if I can get it in there. Mm -hmm. Like, like that. One bad thing about this is the board itself is kind of light. I mean, it's heavy duty board. It's actually quite quite thick it's made quite well but I mean you've got a, a, a snake for <laughs> of wires that makes it you know not the most convenient um, as far as setup like that uh, what I what I did is I just uh, wire tied everything separated and wire tied them together so I can secure them later but uh, you know Add some power, maybe, if I can get this right. <laughs> Went the wrong direction, I do believe. So that's what I'm saying. That's one of the things I don't like about this thing is this thing's kind of a little bit unwieldy. A little power button. When you turn that on, the Oh, did I get it? There. Turn it on and the fan will come on. And let me see if I can get this in a little bit better position so you can see it. Like I said, this is not the most convenient. In fact, um, I actually plan on bolting it to this slots right here already there plus the one right there there's three it already fits it quite well um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now so it makes it a little bit easier so I can show you this so I just took the lid off this one like I said just so happens that uh, these two slots more or less match up to it and one of these um, <clears throat> slots for the venting matches up to it I'm only gonna put the uh, um, three in there, I think that'll be sufficient. Also, just, just a note on the, uh, these little screws. Um, I actually, um, am putting a, uh, a little tiny lock washer on there. You know what I just realized? Oh, yeah, I do. Let's say I don't think I have a screwdriver, but I do. Oh, I do have a screwdriver. Maybe. Ah, eh, shit. This is when multiple hands would be so much easier. I mean, I guess I have multiple hands. I have two. I need three. One thing I like about these vessels, it has this little knurling right here, so you can just spin it with your f your fingers. Don't want to make too tight until we get them all.
Anyways, I'll be back. I'm gonna secure the rest. Okay, I've got it secured. So it's pretty simple. I just put three in. I don't think it really needs that fourth one. If it does, it's <laughs> pretty simple. Drill a little hole in it. And then now it should be just a wee bit easier to handle. Maybe if I can get the thing back together. Why are you not wanting to get back together? There we go. Maybe. There we go. Now we got it. It's got the standby LED and a power on LED. Yeah, I think you can see that. So, get my spaghetti wires all out, tangled. But, yeah. Get it common. Good thing about these, um, that's actually, that's supposed to be the minus 12. Yeah, it's 10 and a half. But, uh, I think that's common. Yeah, that's common. Power on, and then five three, and then five three. So you get a you get a lot of three three taps and a lot of five taps, which is awesome. And like I said, I only have one twelve volt tap because I have a twenty pin. Um, and you know, I don't know if I already said it or not, but I plan on using this mainly for just. <laughs> Some little LED stuff, little LED strip. It won't do a, 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 a and it says on the on the side uh, that the 12 volt is uh, uh, 13 amps, but I'm I'm I don't know if that is tr true or not because it's it, it won't light a whole four feet of of these LED strips. So and I might have something wrong with this too. So I'd, I'd have to check it further. But, you know, LEDs is one thing, and Arduino-type stuff, lots of 3.3 and 5-volt stuff, and, you know, just little little uh, low-voltage stuff, you know. It's not it's not a do-all, but if, you, you know, if, if you don't have anything at all on the bench, this is, you know, a good way to get some uh, multi-taps out. Plus, if you use something, you know, like um, boost or buck converters like this, then you then you have uh, uh, variable voltages and stuff, and you know with this one you can vary the current also. So I mean you've you've got options, um, little boost and buck converters will make a big difference. I don't know if this is advisable or not, <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and put it out there anyways. You know this massive wires and stuff, you know, uh, uh, you know one mass is going to the board itself that you put on there and the other is just like the old power supplies that goes to the various you know like cd drives and hard drives and whatnot <clears throat> um the wires are actually color coded so you could actually if you wanted to still use these and put terminations on the end you know other than what's on there so you could just do you know plug into things like you could um take you know the barrel connection right here and uh, you know take uh, a couple of these apart after you find out what is what uh, as far as I could tell like on this particular power supply the reds are all uh, 5 volt the yellows are all 12 volt and the 3.3's are all orange uh, commons and grounds seem to be black etc cetera, etc cetera. so or if you didn't want to go that route which <laughs> this next suggestion would be very tedious uh, but you could actually open up the power supply obviously unplug it and drain capacitors um, and uh, desolder all this crap basically that you may not need to just tidy it up a little bit so you only and you know basically only have one set of wires to work with it's like this one I'm probably gonna uh, in fact, I might even use this little slot right here. This seems to be fairly convenient. I might have just wire tie it right like that. That way, at least that one's in nice and tidy. 
So just some ideas. Also, one, one more thing, if I'm not going to get it myself, but if you don't like, if you plan on doing something like this, you know, this is obviously easy, you can just plug and play, but if you don't like, say, the terminal blocks, and if you wanted binding posts, um, I, I want to say, I think it's SparkFun that makes an ATX power supply breakout board, but it, instead of the terminal blocks here, it has binding posts. I thought about going that way, but for what I'm doing, um, I don't think it's worth it. For one reason is you you only get um, you know a set of binding posts for one set of three, three, one set of five, one set of twelve, and I think one set of minus twelve. Maybe I don't know. There's only like four four connections, four terminal um, uh, uh, binding post sets, so you're you're gonna l lose a, a bunch of these. You know where uh, you know since like I said you only have one for each whereas this one you have multiples for for each of them so uh, uh, kind of and they're about the same price if I remember right they're both both uh, they're both about uh, 20 bucks just wanted to show you um, how I kind of wire tied this the slots right here worked out pretty good so it's nice and secure now I've got the uh, the back pretty much secured so it ain't going anywhere so it's a lot easier to, to, to handle now you know and I've got you know plenty of room right here now to um, you know add whatever I need to add